Okay, this second unit focuses completely on the mole, so we're going to look at different ways we work with the mole in, and uh, then we'll move on to how to work out some volumes and masses. First of all, you need to be aware of uh, these units if you're not already aware of those things. How to convert between uh, different scales. So the first one here is convert 9 nanometers to centimeters given that 1 nanometer is 1 by 10 to the minus 9 centimeters. So the method I'm going to do here is done quite purposely because it's a method we're going to use throughout the whole course. It's seen that there is a ratio here. So if the 1 nanometer is to 1 by 10 to the 9, then you'll have 9 millimeters, uh, 9 nanometers is to x. Now, because that is a ratio, you can then make these things uh, multiply out to be equal. For instance, if you have a ratio here, 1 is to 2, and then you say you've got 2 and you don't know what that is, or you've got 3 and you don't know what that is, you can cross multiply these things out, and so they're 4 equals x equals 4, or you could cross multiply these ones out, and so you have and that would be 4 there, you would have x equals 2, 3 is a 6, so you would have a 6 here. You could also cross multiply, say if the ratio was 2 is to 4, 3 is to what? You can, you can multiply these ones out here, so 2x equals 12, and so x equals 6 again. It's a mat mathematical trick that basically if you've got ratios, you can cross multiply them out and they'll be the same thing, so that's how we get the x. Now I'm focusing on this uh, and explaining this because we're just going to use it quite a bit. Uh, so going back to the problem, here I have the ratios all set out. I'll then cross multiply them out and there we get x equals 9 by 10 to the minus 9 centimeters. Now we're going to convert between units. Convert 530 calories to joules given 1 calorie equals 4.18 joules. So again you can do the ratio thing there and so you've got the x that allows you to cross multiply. Once you times that out you end up with 2,215 2, joules. In this particular case we've rounded off to the most number of sig figs which probably should be 1 because there's only 1 calories. So it should actually be 2,000. Uh, we won't worry about sig figs until we do unit 11. All right, now that we know how to convert between economies of scale and between units, let's come up with the introduction to the mole itself. The mole is simply just a very large number. So because atoms are so, so small, we need to use a very large number to represent them. We're going to use the symbol N, uh, and the abbreviation for a mole is, is with the E chopped off. It's just M-O-L. This is, first of all, a, a practice. This here represents number of particles, which could be ions, atoms, molecules, formula, units, or electrons. Uh, that's the mole number, uh, and n is the number of moles. Uh, so let's have a look at a few problems. Let's deal with atoms first. Here we have how many atoms are there in one mole of H2O. One mole of H2O, uh, one molecule of H2O has three atoms, so that's three atoms per mole. So if that's the case, the number of particles will be the number of moles times the value of the mole itself. So using that formula there, we get to a value of 1.806 by 10 to the 24 atoms. In a similar way, how can we work out how many moles there are if you give it the number of particles? Divide that by 6.02 by 10 to the 23 and you get this value here as two, two moles. Moving on to molecules now. How many molecules are there in four mol moles of H2O? That one's a little simpler because one molecule of H2O is one one molecule, so we can just times it out by the six. Now uh, there's four moles, so we get a total of 2.4 by 10 to the 24 molecules. Working around the other way now, how many moles are there in 12.04 by 10 to the 23? Again, divide it by the value of the mole, and that'll give you a total of two moles in that many number, uh, that many number of particles. Just moving quickly then onto ions. This can be a little trickier. You need to write out the formula. So HCl only gives you one ion, so that gives 2.5 is 2.5 ions. If it was something like H2SO4, you'd have to double it because two H pluses are coming off. So in a similar way, you get 1.5 by 10 to the 24 H plus ions in 2.5 moles of HCl. Working around the other way, if you've got 14 by 10 to the 23 H plus ions, that will give you a total of 2.3 moles of H plus ions. Now moving into the more trickier ones with the electrons, this could potentially trick you up if you can't count out, count out the electrons correctly. 
This problem is much easier because it's just helium with two electrons. And so one mole of helium has two moles of electrons. So you times that out and you get 12 by 10 to the 23 electrons. Working the other way, the number of moles is 2.7 moles of electrons. Lastly, formula units. This one's important because you need to realize what a formula unit is. The basic smallest whole number ratio of an ionic compound. If you're given the chemical formula, the formula unit is that chemical formula. So that works out to 6.02 by 10 to 3 formula units of NaCl in one mole of NaCl. And working the other way around, if you've got 1 by 10 to the 30 formula units of NaCl, that works out to 1.7 by 10 to the 6 moles of NaCl formula units. Working back now to what might be revision, if you've done previous syllabus like IGCSE, we're talking about relative atomic mass here before we can start working with real problems. Now when you see that word relative, make sure you don't put units on there, grams per mole. Make sure you know what the, the definition is. So we've taken a, a carbon-12 isotope, so there's six protons and six neutrons and given that an arbitrary value of 12. And so that's what a relative atomic mass is. So you can think of it perhaps as um, every neutron and proton is given a, a one value. Uh, be aware of the terminology too, relative isotopic mass, if it's an isotope, relative molecular mass, a molecule, relative formula mass, if it's a formula unit. In, in my calculations, I'm just gonna write M uh, without the little R to represent the, the, ma the molecular mass, which is not, which is gonna cover all of these. So I'm gonna use the word molecular mass to cover the word formula mass, so isotopic mass, and atomic mass, and I'm, I'm not using the word relative there either, so that I'm using that with grams per mole. All right, so make sure in a question if it's relative, don't put the units in there. So first example, what is the relative formula mass of sodium chloride? So you simply just go to your periodic table, you grab those numbers there which are the average atomic mass of a range of isotopes that are normally found uh, and you add those together and you get 58.443. The same with H2O, two hydrogens, so you just times that by two and you get 18. Uh, just as I mentioned before, now that we're going to work with real problems, we want to look at the molar mass. So basically when you get those relative atomic masses, if you convert that to grams, that, that measurement in grams gives you exactly one mole of those particles. So let's go to our first problem, how to convert between mass and number of moles. This is the formula that must be remembered. N equals M on M, whereas N is the number of moles, M is the mass in grams, and M is the molar mass in grams per mole. Formula substitute units, make sure you write out the formula, well labeled, uh, substitute and get the units at the end. That will cut down on uh, small errors that can give you the wrong answer. So here's the problem. How many moles are there in one gram of sodium chloride? So make sure you've labelled it. I'm working out the molar mass first, which is 58.443. I'm writing down what else I have, which is uh, one gram, and there's the, the labelled formula, number of moles equals mass on molar mass. I then substitute those values in and I get a final answer of 0 0.0171 moles of sodium chloride. Next question, how many grams are there in two moles of H2O? Again, I'll just work out the molar mass of H2O first and I can rearrange the formula. Substituting into the formula, two times 18, that gives me 36 grams of H2O when I have two moles of H2O. Now that we've got a little bit more comfortable with converting between mole and grams, let's have a look at the general strategy when we're doing stoichiometry problems. First, you're usually given a solid, liquid or gas. So first thing you need to do is convert to, a, to moles so that you can use the balanced equation to convert between ratios, so you convert between one chemical and the other. And then once you've done that, you can then grab that second chemical and convert back to the solid, liquid or gas that you can um, you expect to find or you, or you can use. Here's the solid strategy. I've just written this out so you can see that the, it, it's quite simple. There's the formula there to get from mass to, to, to moles. You work out what the ratios are to the moles of B and then you use the same formula again to get back to the mass of B. So the first problem here, if you've got 184 grams of potassium chlorate, how many grams of oxygen will you get? So we're going to use these uh, simplified atomic masses here. First we draw out the chemical formula and make sure it's balanced so we can get our ratios correct. We start with the number of moles that we're going to that we have of potassium chlorate which is 1.5. Using the ratio we then can work out that that will give us 1.5 times 0 2, 2.25 moles of oxygen. Question wants us to give us the mass of oxygen so then we just use that formula again and sub that in and we get 72 grams of oxygen. 
looking at the problem in a slightly different way now. How many grams of potassium chloride are needed if you want 205 grams of potassium chloride? So a very similar way, you work out well how many moles of potassium chloride is that. So I can work out how many moles of potassium chloride I need, uh, which is 2.75 moles, and then work out how much mass that is. Uh, so times that out using the formula, and that gives me 337 grams. All right, the next thing uh, we're going to look at with moles is working out the percent composition of an element uh, in a compound. Okay, so this is a, expressed as a percentage. So what is the percent composition of sulfur and sulfur dioxide? So we can first work out the masses, relative molecular masses of those things. And so the total mass is going to be the 64 and 32 is going to be the contribution of sulfur. So we divide that by sulfur that by the total and times it by 100 and that gives us 50%. So the percent composition of sulfur is 50 percent. The last calculations are empirical, empirical and molecular formula. Empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio, which could be similar to the molecular formula. So here we could have, this could be the, uh, a compound and it could also be the empirical formula. This one here could be the molecular formula, but the empirical formula for this, because that's not the smallest whole number ratio, you can divide both by two. If that was the molecular formula of this compound, this empirical formula would be this here. And so here's a, a representation of the two. This is a molecular formula for this compound, but its empirical formula is this, which also shares the empirical formula of this uh, molecular compound here. Okay, so let's go to a problem. First of all, these how we go about it. And the most important thing to remember is you're going to be given the percentage of a, of a compound. You can then convert that a percent by weight, convert that to grams by just assuming there's 100 grams of the stuff. And we then we use our stoichiometry to get our ratios to work out what the um, chemical uh, empirical and molecular formula are. So going to the first problem, calculate the empirical formula of a compound composed of 30% uh, carbon, 60% hydrogen and 45% nitrogen. Assuming there's 100 grams, uh, we can then work out the number of moles of each of these things, uh, dividing the uh, that gives us 3, 16 and 3 again. So we write that out as a formula uh, and we divide it by the smallest number which is 3.219 so if we do that for all of the compounds, we get to whole number ratios. Uh, and so we end up with uh, CH5N as the empirical formula. Going on to uh, a second problem. If we have 43% uh, uh, phos uh, phosphorus and 53% 56% uh, oxygen, uh, again, we convert that to grams to work out the number of moles. Uh, as you'll see with some of these other ones, if it doesn't work out to a simple whole ratio, you need to either times uh, by some number to get that. So in this case, uh, the times in by 2 would, would eliminate that 0.5. So the answer of, uh, is P2O5. Molecular formulas are just one extra step on top of empirical formulas. What you'll need to do is realize that there will, will be some whole number ratio of the empirical formula, and so you need to work on that basis. So here we have a problem. Caffeine has a molar mass of 194, and its empirical formula is C4H5N2O. Uh, so what's its molecular formula? Uh, so you grab the empirical formula and you work out what the molar mass of that, which is 97. Uh, and so it'll be, the molecular formula will be some whole number ratio of that. So if we divide them out, uh, we'll see it's 2. Uh, so basically the molecular formula is 2 times the empirical formula. Uh, and so that works out to C8H10N4O2. One more example of uh, molecular empirical formulas. A uh, compound has 71% chlorine, 24% carbon and 4% hydrogen. Uh, we know it's uh, molar mass uh, from experiments to be 98.96 grams. Uh, that should be grams per mole. Uh, what's the molecular formula? Um, and so we, again, convert that to grams to get the moles of each of these. Uh, we can then do the ratios, uh, divide, get it down to the lowest whole number ratio. So we know empirical formula is CLCH4. Uh, now the, the uh, molar mass of that is 48. 0.5 grams, uh, but the molar mass is 98, uh, and so that's exactly 2. Uh, so we know the molar mass of the compound uh, is double that, so the molecular formula must be double the empirical formula. So we then know that the molecular formula is Cl2C2H4.